we have ended last week our uh, sermon series, and today we're, we're just going through different topics, topical messages, and this morning I want to share this message entitled, Happiness Can Come Out of Unhappy Situations. Amen? If you're looking at the screen right now, happiness can come out of unhappy situations. Amen. Um, we have a starting verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 17. It says here, for our light and momentary troubles. That's what the apostle says. Light and momentary troubles. Troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Now the Apostle Paul looking at this, he is comparing what is going through with what is to come. Amen. <laughs> so as a believer, we can still have joy and happiness in the midst of unhappy situations. In fact, a lot of Happiness and a lot of joy in the believer's life comes out of very unhappy situations. And even today, as we face a global pandemic all over the world, we, we face um, a country divided, we can see and know that God's hand is still over all of this. And I love the children's song that goes, If Christ is in my vessel, I can smile at the storm. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, friends, I just want to say this. How many of you are dealing with pain today? Maybe some could say yes. Maybe some could say no. But one thing is sure. One way or another in life, we undergo pain and difficulties. Amen. Well, let me just say, would you want to wish to be pain-free? Anyone here who's watching want to wish that they're pain-free? There's a study about lepers. Um, leprosy is a very difficult uh, disease, especially during biblical times. But one of the things that they've studied is why some, some of those who are dealing with this disease called leprosy will just go to sleep and then wake up in the morning missing fingers and toes. And then they made some people observe these lepers who were dealing with this uh, leprosy. And they found out, friends, that at night, some of these little rats or mice would come and nibble on their fingers and toes, and they would not even feel it. They are what we call pain-free. Now, sometimes pain or sufferings has a very important purpose. It is a natural response for us to see that there is a problem going on somewhere. Amen? Amen. Uh, I don't know if you have watched the show Cast Away with Tom Hanks. Um, his character in the show is Chuck Nolan. He was gone for four entire years. Four years. He was one who was very conscious of time. He was one who was very detail-oriented. And after four years, he was taken, brought back into civilization as a changed man with a different perspective in life. Sometimes, let me just say this, problems <laughs> help us deal with, you know, help us mature, help us grow. And happiness can sometimes be brought out from very unhappy situations. Amen? For those of you who are watching, say amen with me. And for everybody else that's here in the sanctuary, can you just say amen? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to look at a few ways how to deal with pain. Let's look at this. Number one, recognize that pain, pain as it is. It is there. Uh, sometimes there's a, one of the things that has g grabbed or went inside Christian circles today is a metaphysics, wherein even if it's there, just believe that it's not there and it won't be there. That's not actually biblical. The Bible never tells us to lie to ourselves. Amen? So there's a cultic tendency with that particular belief. I want to say that because this is predominant in a lot of teachings today. Now, we can claim the healing of God. We can declare God's healing but 
we have to address and recognize that we sometimes feel pain. It's okay to do that. And a lot of factors that bring about this pain is defining meaning, dealing with meaning. Sometimes people are dealing with unhappy situations because they don't feel that they have value and meaning in life. They don't understand how everything is happening. The second one is in the area of forgiveness, pain in the area of forgiveness. Maybe it has to do with forgiving others or forgiving themselves. And maybe for some, it is even dealing with God, forgiving God. Now, that's, that, that's a reality that is predominant in the world today. The, the third one is relatedness. Dealing with connection. Amen? We connect with one another. We touch with one another. And sometimes when we don't have relatedness, sometimes we encounter pain. And the fourth one is hope. Feeling like there is no hope. Some people struggle with pain because they feel like there's no hope. Now, we can categorize everything that we deal with, but one thing is sure, we need to understand that we can trust in God in the middle of that pain that we're dealing with. A lot of times, especially from the Philippine culture, I was born and raised in the Philippines. I understand the Philippine culture, and there is this word called pagtitiis. It is bearing. Just bear it. You can handle it. Just bear it. No, friends, give it to God. Amen? Give it to God. Give all our burdens, all our cares, all our concerns to Him because He cares for us. Hallelujah. Pain is a signal. It's a good thing. It reminds us that there is something that is not functioning well. Unless we recognize it, we can't address it. Amen? Number two, how do we deal with pain? Pain has a root. <laughs> Meaning to say, if we look at the source of pain, it started in the very beginning. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible tells us, The woman, he said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. In the Bible, this is the first occasion in Genesis chapter 3, specifically mentioning the word pain. There is a source. What caused it? Genesis 1 and 2, no pain at all. Everything was going well. Hallelujah. Adam was naming all the animals. Uh, reproduction. Uh, God was giving them the, the marriage institution to be united as one. Um, he was very busy. He was not easy going but yet he did not have any pain now we find the root of this is sin sin the bible says in the book of romans chapter 3 23 and romans 6 23 for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god hallelujah and this is the wages of sin eventually the victory of pain is death but in first corinthians 15 the bible says but thanks be to god we have victory over death. Death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? Hallelujah. Where is that found? It is found in a person. His name is Jesus Christ. So when we go back and deal with our different hurts, pains, maybe it might be physical pain. Maybe some of us who are watching right now has been through this global pandemic. Maybe you have actually gone through it in physical pain but let me say we can trace the original root to that to adam amen now let me ask you this has god ever experienced pain has he ever been burdened by pain the bible tells us in genesis chapter 6 verse 6 the bible says the lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth and his heart was deeply troubled Whew. For the very first time, God was deeply troubled. How? Because humans were not following God's ways. Now, this part of scripture is what we call a poetical 
narrative, and it's for us to understand God's feelings. But let me just say that God, amen, is a God that is over every emotion. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, it's important to note this, friends, because what we find here is that when man's heart is filled with sin, God's heart pains. Are you with me? Amen? When man's heart is filled with sin, God's heart also pains. So when we ask the question, is pain just my situation today? Is it only me that's going through difficulties and pain? The answer is absolutely not. Even God, when we make mistakes and we sin, it grieves his heart. It grieves him. His son, Jesus Christ, underwent tremendous pain while he was physically here on earth. In fact, because of the burdens that he carried, he can carry our own burdens. Amen? He is able to take our load from us. Can you say amen to that? Amen? Now, let's look at this in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, starting with verse number 13. It says, When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command locusts to devour the land, or send a plague among my people. Now, what is a plague? It is a pestilence. <laughs> it is a disease that has come over the land. Global disease. This is from God's word. Second Chronicles 7 verse 13. But then in Second Chronicles 7 14, he says, If my people, are you a child of God? Amen. Are you one of those who are called my people? Remember, in the Old Testament, this was a nationalistic thing. It was an entire nation that was called his people. Now today, we have been adopted as sons and daughters of the Most High, the Church of Jesus Christ. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Hallelujah. One of the most familiar passages of the Old Testament. One that I love to hold on to and quote. It has to do with a covenant. What is a covenant? Our God is a covenantal God. He says, if my people, then I. If this is what you will do, then this is what I will do. God deals with us in covenants. One area that is covenantal is in the area of giving financially. Are you listening to me? Amen. The Bible says, if you give, God will devour, will stop the devourer. Amen. From destroying your farm. <laughs> Hallelujah. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. Give. Hallelujah. Your tithes and offerings unto the Lord. Now, let's look at this, friends. How is it covenantal in nature? If God's people will humble themselves, would pray, would seek my face, and they will turn from their wicked ways. Remember, the root of pain, the root of, tra the, the root of suffering, eventually it rocks bottom. In the word sin. And if my people, and God gives us a solution here, then I will hear from heaven. And I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. One of the greatest things that believers can do today in dealing with pain, in dealing with unpleasant situations, is to humble, to pray, to seek the face of God, and to turn. One of the commitments that we here in Faith International Fellowship has done through this pandemic is to pray every night. Now we make devotionals, we, we, we uh, have different devotionals. There's a few of us who are actually making them here in our church, but we encourage you every evening to pray alongside with us. To seek the face of God. 
Amen. Because we believe that if God's people humble themselves and pray and seek his face and turn, the covenant of God that he will hear, he will forgive, and he will heal the land. It's the same thing throughout the ages and even up till today. Can you say amen to that? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's look at this in Matthew chapter 16, verse number 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Meaning to say that there is a form of pain or sacrifice that is involved in following God. Amen? A very good um, illustration about that is when the fish are biting on a Sunday morning <laughs> in Galveston, but yet our hearts are committed to serve God and to honor Him on Sundays. Sometimes it means changing jobs so that you can be off on a Sunday morning, so that you can attend church, different things. Now, it, it is more than just that, but we are called to deny ourselves and to take up our cross. There's a sacrifice and pain involved in that. But yet, his pain, God's pain is joyful. Amen? His pain is easy. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. I would rather change my pains for his pains. I would rather change my pains for his pains. And he wants to take my pains. He wants to take my struggles in his place. And he has done that in the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. Let's look at John chapter 16 verse 20 to verse 21. Very truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. Jesus was telling the disciples about his passing away. And the Bible continues to tell us, you will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. Hallelujah. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. Meaning to say, pain, friends, is temporary. Amen. Even if our physical body expires because of pain, if we have Jesus in our hearts, there's a different story somewhere else. Are you with me? Maybe we have family and loved ones who are dealing with pain. And maybe they were not victorious in this side of life. But because they have Jesus they are victorious in him today. They're celebrating in the very presence of God. Hallelujah. Why? Because it is God. It is the salvation. Our life, friends, today doesn't end in the grave. It goes further than that. But let me also say that pain is seasonal. Are you with me? Amen. It doesn't last forever. It's only temporary. It doesn't go Long. That's why in the New Testament, the Bible repeats itself. In the Gospels, it says like this, And it came to pass in those days. Meaning to say, it never intends to stay. It is going to pass. Hallelujah. Now in the, the book of Psalm, I love the Psalm. The Psalm of David says, For mourning and grieving will endure for a night. Hallelujah. But joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. Pain brings about good and positive changes sometimes. Amen. Now, have you ever seen, seen a person who goes to the gym because he wants to have big muscles but he doesn't want to lift the weights? <laughs> well, have you ever seen someone who wants to make money but doesn't want to work? Hello? Have you ever seen a kid in school who wants to become a doctor but doesn't study his lessons? There is pain involved, but yet the outcome is good because sometimes pain is a doorway. Hallelujah. Are you excited about that church? Amen. 
I'm still not hearing an amen. I used to hear amen from Pastor Tata. <laughs> now there's more. I need to hear more amens. Hallelujah. Let's look at number three, friends. How to deal with pain number three, minimize the damage. How do you minimize the damage? By turning to God. Let life go on despite the pain. Let life continue. When we suffer, let's not get mad with God. Let's continue on. We can't give up. Look at what Job said. And this is something that is key for our own personal lives today. Let's look at Job chapter 6 verse 10. The Bible says, Then I would still have this consolation. My joy in unrelenting pain that I had not denied the words of the Holy One. Can you say amen to that? When things are bad and you prayed for things to become good and they remain to be where they're at. Have this assurance like Job, he says, my joy in unrelenting pain is this. I still believe in the truth, even if the facts don't line up. Can you say amen? I still believe that his word is true, even when situations don't line up. We see this in the life of the apostle Paul. He says, three times I prayed for this thorn in the flesh. To be gone. And it did not go away. This is the Apostle Paul. The par excellence missionary. That wrote two thirds of the New Testament. Has a physical infirmity. That he prayed three times. And I believe that this was intense prayer. But yet he says. You know there's, there's something that good that came out of this. I've learned that when I'm weak. That's when I'm strong. Can you say amen? I've learned that my strength comes from God. And he says this. Powerful words that echoes through the centuries. Even today here in Faith International Fellowship. We say this all the time. My grace is sufficient in my weaknesses. His grace is sufficient. His grace. God's grace is sufficient in my weaknesses. When we go through difficult times and pain, His grace is still there. Job chapter 6 verse 10 reminds us, friends, that the joy at the bottom of it all is that I didn't deny the words of the Holy One. Let me make this uh, statement very clear today, friends, that no matter what, do not leave the presence of God. Don't deny your faith in God. No matter what the trials, no matter what the pains, no matter what you're going through, no matter the layoff, no matter what happens with the house, you know, whatever things that go on. Do not leave the presence of God. Just stay strong. Remember Job lost everything. He lost his children. He lost his his livestock. He was a very wealthy man, rich in every way. His wife, the only survivor, was the only one who was telling him, give up, curse God, and then just die. Job, what did Job say? I have joy that I did not deny his words. Hallelujah. That was what encouraged him. And I just want to encourage us friends today that why will we not leave the presence of God? Because he is one who has been through. Jesus Christ himself can sympathize with you in your weakness today. He has been through it all. Are you hungry right now? He's been through hunger. Has tears fell out of your eyes? He has gone through that. Now, is, is anyone who's watching right now experienced death? Jesus did it in the worst form. And eventually, unless God comes and raptures us, what I mean by that is he's going to come and rapture the church. But if we die before that point, be assured, he died a worser death than you have. That's why he can sympathize with us in our pains and our weaknesses. Do not leave the presence of God. You and God are a majority. Can you say amen to that? 
it doesn't have to be me and everybody else. Just me and God. That's enough. Amen? That's enough. Hallelujah. The next one, how to deal with pain, number four, do not let it happen again. Amen? <laughs> Try to prevent these pains from happening again. Sometimes the recurring pain. If we don't deal with something, it comes back. If you're looking at your screens right now, you can see an empty house, a clean out house. So let's look at Matthew 12, verse 43 to verse 45. What it says about cleaning house. Amen? Let's look at verse 43. When an impure spirit comes out of a person, this is a demonic spirit, it goes through... Arid places seeking rest and does not find it. So when the spirit leaves, verse 44, then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house unoccupied, swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes its seven other spirits more wicked than itself and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. This is how it will be with this wicked generation. Amen? Now, what is the Bible telling us here? The Bible is telling us that let us not let those pains reoccur again. The Bible tells us that when people who get delivered from demonic spirits, we see this a lot, especially in revivals, in meetings, in, in different things. They get so excited, like in a camp meeting, they get so pumped up. But then four weeks later, you see them go back to where they were. They gave their lives to God. They cried out to God. They emptied house and cleaned house and swept the floor and made it immaculate. But then, they did not replace it with God's dwelling, God's Holy Spirit. So what happened, friends, is that because it was empty, the same spirit that left tried to come back. And it did not only come back by itself, it brought seven more. Have you noticed, friends, that when Jesus rebuked the spirit out of the dem demon-possessed man, the spirit wanted to go to a different location? Jesus sent it to the pigs. Why? Because the spirit needs a host. Are you with me? If we don't empty house and replace house with God, we become a clean dwelling place for more spirits. That's why do not let that happen again. Pain. The, the situations, the struggles that we deal with, whether, whether it's relationships, whether it's uh, in, 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 in uh, couples' relationships, different things, whatever it is, don't let it happen again. Clean house, replace it with God. Clean house, replace it with God's Holy Spirit. You are, according to the Bible, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen? You are the dwelling place of God. God. Hallelujah. You know, the enemy is a roaring lion. He is seeking whom he may devour. Who can he devour? He's looking for someone who has just clean house, but not dwelt with God and his spirit. Amen? Let's look at this next one, friends. Number five, pray that it will go away. First Chronicles chapter 4. Verse 9 to verse number 10. Pray that it will go away. Let's look at this. This is a very familiar passage when I was in my Bible school days. The prayer of Jabez. Amen. Jabez, according to 1 Chronicles 4 verse 9 to 10, was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Verse 10, Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm, so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. 
Now, who is Jabez? In 1 Chronicles chapter 4, the writer, the chronicler, describes different people in the line of Judah. But there's a hiccup in this generation of different people. Not only in verse 9 and 10 stops to just mention a person, it mentions the description of what this person did in relation to everybody else. The writer stopped in verse 9 and 10 and describes who Jabez was. Who is Jabez, friends? He is someone who was born in pain. In fact, the word Jabez in Hebrew means pain. <laughs> Can you imagine that? You're walking around and your name is pain. Pain, Torres. Pain, Pakleb. Pain, whatever last name is. That was who he was. His name was pain. Everywhere he went, his name was pain. But you know what he did? He cried out to God and said, Lord, I don't want to dwell with my past. I don't want to stay here. I want to go forward and move on. Get away. I want to pray that this will go away. And what did he pray? Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Hallelujah. Name is just a name. I want your presence, God. I want you to have full control over my life. I want you to bless me. I don't want to, I don't want to live in the past. I want to dwell with you. Lord, enlarge my territory. Enlarge my area of influence. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. Jabez prayed that God will Keep him from pain. You know, in, in the spiritual sense, we are all born with a condition. We, we struggle with it. The book of Psalm, in Psalm chapter 51, in my mother's womb, the Bible says that there, there is this, this nature of sin. And when, when we come out, it's a, it's a struggle. I know that we have been created in the image of God. But somehow, one way or another, when a child is born, a child wants, one of the first words that they would learn is the word mine. <laughs> Mind. You don't have to teach children to be mischievous. They know how to. But yet, friends, our God is a God of deliverance. God granted the request of Jabez. We can also have the same thing. Amen? Amen. Let's look at Matthew chapter 4. This is from the very words of Jesus Christ. Jesus went through throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. News about him spread all over Syria, and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering with severe pain, the demon possessed, those having seizures, and they paralyzed, and he healed them. And there's something here that's striking in this group of passages. Those who were suffering severe pain. Specifically mentions that as something that Jesus healed people with. That means we can pray. We can tell God. We can ask God to deliver us from pain. Can you say amen? Amen. Because Jesus is a deliverer, and he has done it. He modeled it for us. That he went to every place, even in Syria, far away from the Holy Land, yet God was delivering people. Amen? Look at number six. How to deal with pain. Be encouraged about the future deliverance. Hallelujah. Amen? This is very encouraging because even if we get delivered from one pain, life will always come back with another pain. That's just life. No matter how we say we will not go through it, it will happen. Because in this world, it's already declared by Jesus himself. In this world, you will have troubles. But he says, I have overcome the world. Amen. Let's look at this. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Hallelujah. That's exciting. Right here, this one where I'm standing at is the old earth. 
There's a new heaven <laughs> and a new earth. Hallelujah. So, biblically speaking, the church gets raptured, then comes back for a millennium in this destroyed earth. Thousand year reign. But the time's going to come at the very end. A new Jerusalem and a new earth. A new heaven and a new earth will come. He's going to make all things new. Let's look at this. I, I'm just so excited. I'm, I'm explaining something that I'm supposed to be reading. A new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city. The new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. Prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And verse 21, verse, uh, verse 3, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or what pain for the old order of things has passed away amen you know friends something about this is this if we don't get our deliverance from pain here we can look forward for a future deliverance amen the secret is no god have a relationship with him. Have a relationship with Jesus Christ. If there is a goal for a believer, if there is a rock bottom objective of a child of God, right now, what is it? It is to love others to the extent that you can share your faith to them because apart from Christ, they will die and go to hell. It's hard to say it that way, but it's a fact. If you have a mission that God has called, it's not our mission, it is God's mission. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20. It says, go and make disciples of all nations. That's the objective. The rock bottom objective of a believer is to bear witness of Christ. Amen? Nothing goes above that. Amen? It is to be a vessel, a witness of what you heard. You heard something about the Lord? You received salvation in Christ? Then share it. Why? So that Matthew 21 verse 1 to verse 4 will be experienced by people that you have shared to. Let us redeem the time. That's what the Bible says. For our time is short. Let's have children in God. <laughs> Can you say amen? Maybe not any more biological children, but children in God. Those who have received faith in Christ because we told them about Christ. I got the privilege last week of leading someone to the Lord. This person responded and said, Amen. And with his frail voice, tried to shout, Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Squeezed my hand. The mission of the church not to live happy and be blessed financially. No. The mission of the church is to bear witness of the Son. That's what God called us to do. To bear witness of a Son, of God's Son. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's look at the last one. Make the most of the least. How do we deal with pain? Make the most of the least. Lamentations 3, 22, 23, the Bible says, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. Hallelujah. For his compassions never fail. 
They are new every morning. And great is your faithfulness. Amen. So, there's always a new blessing the next day. There's always a new mercy and a new compassion. Meaning to say, we can make the most of what we've got. Amen? We can make the most of the pain that we bear. We can seek God. We can pray. We can believe. But don't let that pain manage you. Don't let that situation hold you captive. Give it to Jesus. His mercies are new every morning. Because of His great love, we are not consumed. For His compassions, they never fail. You know, my compassion fails. <laughs> my mercy fails. But His never fails. Never fails. His mercy never fails. They're new. Every morning, there's, there's a supply available every day for you and for me in the midst of what we deal with in life. He has it for us. So friends, in closing this message, I want to encourage you that even in unhappy situations, God can bring out happiness and all that. God can bring out a joy that can't be described externally because it is from God. Just like Apostle Paul, our light in momentary afflictions. Now I can say Paul's sufferings was light. His was probably the worst outside of Christ. Maybe Peter. But let me say, he called it light in momentary in comparison to the achievement of the glory of God. Are you excited about that, friends? The true joy is not circumstantial. It's found in a person. And that person is Jesus Christ. Let's give ourselves to Him right now. Lord Jesus, I thank You that You are with me. I thank You that Your grace is sufficient in my weaknesses. I thank You, Lord, that I can pray and I can be like Jabez who, cannot, who doesn't have to dwell on my past. Lord, enlarge my territory. Bless me. Lord, I pray that I will not have to dwell on the pain of yesteryears, but I can dwell in the assurance that I am a child of the Most High God. Thank you for your presence. Thank you that you love me. Thank you that you care for me. I give it all back to you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.